Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And I look very festive today because I'm going to be baking a holiday inspired recipe. I feel like for Christmas time coming up soon, I have a lot of great cookie recipes, perfect for a cookie box. And I really wanted to start with this one because this one is actually a gluten-free recipe and it's naturally gluten-free, so it just automatically tastes good. You don't have to worry about finding gluten-free flour because we use almond flour and that's what gives these cookies such a delicious chewy texture they're honestly so good and if you are making a cookie box for the holiday season I feel like it's always great to incorporate at least one gluten-free option because not everyone can have gluten for the holidays and we don't want to leave anyone out these cookies are so delicious and they are for my almond espresso brownie cookies they literally taste like a mocha coffee if you will because it has that coffee flavor and that chocolatey rich chocolatey flavor they are so delicious so let's get started and let's make these delicious gluten-free almond espresso brownie cookies Now I already have all of my ingredients prepped and ready to go so this makes life super simple but here's what you should definitely do first and that is melting the butter and the chocolate together. Now I take my chocolate, I use a semi-sweetened chocolate chips. You can use semi-sweetened blocks of chocolate by all means and I melt the semi-sweetened chocolate chips with a quarter of a cup of butter. So I use eight ounces or 225 grams of semi-sweetened chocolate chips with a quarter of a cup of butter or 57 grams and I like to melt this in the microwave in increments of 30 seconds for about three times so the first time 30 seconds give it a stir the next time 30 seconds give it a stir it will look almost ready but we don't want any lumps in there so another 30 seconds give it a stir and you're ready to go I like to do this first because you do want the chocolate to cool down a little bit before we add it to the cookie recipe so do the chocolate and the butter first get that over with and let's get something else we're going to keep on the side until we're ready to go now what gives these cookies a really delicious espresso flavor is going to be the instant coffee or instant espresso powder that we're using. We use one tablespoon. Now in order to dissolve the one tablespoon of espresso powder, because if you just add it to the mix, you risk getting those granules of bitter coffee and we don't want that. I always add this to two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Once you have that together, give it a quick mix and you'll notice that this becomes almost like a really rich concentrated coffee or espresso. Oh, it smells so good. This smells like what the cookies are going to taste like, so that is delicious. So one tablespoon of that instant coffee and this really transforms these and makes them taste so good. It has an extra coffee kick to them, so they're really delicious. So set that aside until we need it. In a separate bowl, add three quarters of a cup of almond flour or about 90 grams. To that, we are going to be adding two tablespoons of cornstarch or 20 grams. Next, two tablespoons of cocoa powder or about 15 grams. Next, one teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt or about two grams right into the mix. I also like to add about half a cup of white chocolate chips to this cookie recipe. You can leave these plain. You don't have to add any chocolate chips at all. You can add milk if you prefer. You can add dark if you prefer. You can even add nuts in place of this. I just have white chocolate chips and they're set aside until I need them. So with everything set aside, we can work on the sugar and egg mixture. I like to use the paddle attachment of my stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can even do this by hand, but it would take you much longer because we're really going to whip the eggs and the sugar for about five minutes on a medium speed using the paddle attachment. I have half a cup of white sugar or about 100 grams and I have half a cup of packed brown sugar or about 120 grams. I have two large eggs or about 110 grams. They are room temperature eggs in the bowl of the stand mixer and we are going to whip that for five minutes on a medium speed like I said. So after the sugar and the eggs have become really light and frothy, you will see the color looks so pale and they've transformed. We are then going to be adding two things, the chocolate and the butter. So we're going to add that right away. It is nicely cooled so it's a little bit thickened, but everything has been perfectly melted and incorporated. And to that melted chocolate and butter, we are going to be adding this vanilla extract and instant coffee, the tablespoon of instant coffee and two teaspoons of vanilla extract right into this mix. And now we are going to give this a mix to incorporate for just one minute on a low to medium low speed. 
You really don't want to be over mixing the chocolate at this stage or the next stage. The flour mixture with all of those ingredients, our dry ingredients are about to go in right now and we are going to be putting them in and mixing them for literally, I would say 30 seconds, just until everything becomes incorporated on probably the lowest speed. So two speed or a one or a two. If you're doing this by hand with a whisk, you'll probably want to switch to a spatula and slowly incorporate the dry mix. So let's add the flour mix to our stand mixer. I'm just placing this all in at once. I'm going to add the half a cup of white chocolate chips and give that a quick stir and then we are done. So let's scrape off this paddle attachment to get all that dough. And with this spatula, we are just going to be scraping the sides of the bowl down, making sure there is no patches of flour at the bottom because this is really roughly mixed because you do want the brownies to be a little bit crackly on top and that is the key. You really don't want to overmix this batter. And that looks good. Just a nice once over. And of course you can, by all means, put even more white chocolate chips, even another half a cup if you'd like. You can leave them plain as well. You can add toffee bits. You can honestly do anything. It's so delicious. But I like this batter just lightly kissed with white chocolate chips and we are good to go. So with our oven set to 350 degrees, let's place this on our nice baking pan with parchment paper and I'm going to show you how I do that in a second. So what I have is just a little mini spatula and a quarter of a cup. And this quarter of a cup is going to be how I accurately measure these cookies. Now don't be too eager to put them too close together because these really do spread out. They sort of become a flat crinkly brownie cookies. They're delicious, but they do need their space. So I have a huge baking pan and I can fit about six on this baking pan at a time. And this batter will probably make, I would say about ooh, 10 to 12 cookies. So let's see how many we can get out of this batter. This is a really sticky batter. So I find that doing this method is honestly the best method. So now that we have the six scooped out, I like to bake them just one tray at a time, give them their space. So the oven is set to 350 degrees. We have six cookies ready to be baked. So we are going to be baking them for about 14 minutes give or take. Now, if you end up scooping them out to be a little bit smaller than mine, you'll probably need more like 13 minutes. If they're a little bit bigger, 15 minutes. So as a general rule of thumb, 14 minutes is really good. So let's place these in the oven and set our timer and I'll see you back here to taste them. The first batch is finished baking. The second batch is in the oven. These literally just came out. Oh my gosh, how beautiful and perfect do these look? The crinkly tops literally make them look like brownies. So they are really fudgy brownie cookies. So while the other batch is still in the oven, I decided to give it a try. I'm losing a lot of light here because it gets dark by five o'clock. So let's get this party started. I've already had some of the batter. So let's give this delicious gluten-free almond espresso brownie cookie a try. Mm. Mm. You can see how fudgy and delicious it is inside. It's perfectly chocolatey and chewy. Oh my gosh, these are addictive. Mm. Very fudgy. But as you guys saw, not that much butter actually went into them. So they're not that bad and they're even gluten-free. So they are almost guilt-free Christmas inspired cookies. They're everything that I love about Christmas and the holidays. They're rich, they're decadent, they're fudgy, they're chewy. They have a little crisp crunch on the outside and the inside is nice and gooey. Honestly, this cookie is so delicious. These are seriously addictive and you can really taste that coffee powder in them or that espresso powder, and it just gives it that extra kick. It really brings out the fudgy chocolate flavor. This is almost like the perfect chocolate cookie. I have a lot more recipes coming your way, a lot more Christmas-inspired recipes as well, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching once again, and please feel free to leave me a comment down below if you did enjoy this recipe. I would love to know. As well, I will have the exact recipe with the ingredients and instructions on my blog, ladolcelisa.com. So please check that out as well. I will link it in the description box down below. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, happy baking for the holiday season. Bye guys. Be finishing this cookie. Mm. Scrape every bit of this chocolate and butter. Let me save this as a treat for yourself. <laughs>